Saludos y bienvenidos a todos. Muchísimas gracias por conectarse en esta tarde del martes. Estamos muy felices y muy agradecidos con todos ustedes a través de Facebook Live, YouTube Live, OBM Radio Live. Quiero en este momento presentarles el programa Viva las Tardes con Elaine en inglés. Live in the afternoons with Elaine. I am so privileged and so honored and so thankful to God that we have this special program this afternoon. We have a very special guest. Here with me at the studios at OVM Radio is Frank Barbado. Welcome, Frank. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Well, thank you, Elaine, and thank you for having me. It's quite an honor, actually. Thank you so much. I'm honored. And uh, we will have a very special guest at the end of the program, and we're going to have a conversation that I know everyone will enjoy. They sure will. Thank you so much. I want to talk about your beginnings. I want people to learn more about Frank Barbado, about your family's legacy. Correct. Yes. Where could we begin? It's so exciting. Oh, there's, uh, well, I would start with uh, the fact that uh, my grandfather, who I'm named after, Frank Barbado, uh, was a, a mason in Bari, Italy. And then Bari, Italy, uh, that was, that's on the, uh, what, what I guess would be the more uh, uh, eastern coast of uh, Italy. Uh, he was a mason, and he worked with a, his cousin that was a mason, and that was actually uh, related to uh, Nancy Sinatra Barbado, my cousin. And they grew up in the small town of Bari uh, and, uh, of course, migrated over to New York. And the family, you know, made their way through different parts of New York, Jersey City and uh, uh, upstate New York, the Rochester, New York area and Buffalo area and whatnot. Um, but that's basically where the connection started as far as what uh, my grandfather used to tell me. And I remember always being at my grandfather's and we would see Frank Sinatra singing on a show on the Dean Martin show or one of the variety shows or on his own show. And my grandfather would always look at the TV and say, Frank, Frank, you see that a man over there? You are related to him. At that age, I had no <laughs> idea what that meant, you know, but I did know that I appreciated the music. I respected the man and the, and the music. And of course, uh, So did my entire family, but uh, didn't really understand the connection of the family until I grew, got older and, and, and started to really uh, perform and sing myself. Now, when you grew older and you started to realize the legacy of the family, at what moment, at what uh, point did, you, did it hit you and you wanted to also sing? Well, when I was, uh, actually as a young boy, mom, my mother always encouraged us to uh, be in music. My brother was a percussionist, my, my oldest brother, my, my middle brother was a guitarist. He still plays guitar to this day and uh, creates his own music. And of course, I was the singer. Um, I, I sang in uh, choirs. I've done Godspell and other plays such as that, Narnia, and performed uh, on stage. Uh, again, um, not not so much always as a uh, a young man, but as I got older and um, you know in my life, uh, I, I've loved to perform. And as I sang and, and got to sing for family and other people, uh, the you know it, it, the buzz started, you know, and it was. Uh, My mom would say, gee, you, you, you have such a talent and such a gift. And so many people I knew said the same thing. Well, after a while, when you hear that from so many people, different people saying the same thing, I started to build on that and develop that, um, not so much through any kind of vocal training, but just on my own. I, uh, um, I lived in a, a small town in, out of Rochester, New York, called Webster, New York. And I had a small studio that I set up in my uh, in my in my uh, basement, which was finished. And I remember being down there for days and days, and just going down there and and uh, uh, practicing and recording and and you know trying to refine the uh, the uh, talent and gift that I had. Frank, you have an amazing, beautiful voice. Thank you. It's just wonderful to hear you. Awesome. You actually transport us yeah. to other places and time, That's awesome. and it's just wonderful. Yeah. But you are a self-taught singer. Correct, I am. I well, I, I, like I say, I uh, I would just listen to the music over and over and over, and then I would sing the music, 
and um, and I would read the music. I, I I don't necessarily read music per se. I'm, I'm me and you know, like a Perry Cuomo type of thing. We have one thing in common is that we both don't read music, but we can listen and and sing when we hear it over and over again. We have an ear for the music to be able to sing it. And, and I'm basically taught ear by ta- taught by ear and listening to the music that I enjoyed and what I think is the music that I felt not only that I liked but fit my particular voice. And, and sound so um, and it just became more and more popular and and then when of course adding the family connection in it, it was qu- more inspiring than ever so um, and it inspires so many other people and to see people react to what you do and to give you the accolades uh, and, and tell you things like you've just said it, it uh, it's 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 so it's fulfilling I mean beyond you could what you could believe I just love singing I love performing and um, making people smile and that's what it's all about what do yeah. you see in people when you're performing I are you I'm sure you connect with everyone there but what do you see in their face outside of their smiles do you actually see them being transported <laughs> you know I do in in some cases, but bewilderment and you when and you're looking out into an audience and singing, I just see people looking like, uh, "Wow, is this is this for real?" In fact, I remember doing a performance at the jazz festival up in Rochester, New York, and um, I was singing in this uh, little lounge, uh, and this and it was packed, and people were outside the door and. Uh, outside and I remember a, a gentleman coming in and um you know making his way to the front of the stage the small stage that I was on it was smoky in the room at the time because it was a cigar lounge as I remember and he made a comment of uh to someone else that he thought it was uh that I was uh, a, a lip syncing to the music and so what I did is in the next song that I sang, I won't forget the song, it was Witchcraft, I think, of all songs. And I changed the lyrics in the middle of the song. And he just went, his mouth just dropped and everyone started laughing and clapping and cheering. And the the, the feeling was just amazing to have somebody, first of all, say that they thought I was lip syncing. I thought, wow, okay, <laughs> I'm, I, is it that really that, that good? And then uh, to see his face after the fact when I changed the words and lyrics to the song. So yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. <laughs> wow. It's amazing. Now, what type of music outside of the one that you currently sing mm-hmm. did you enjoy as well? Or did you ever sing other genres of music? Oh, yeah. When I first started singing, um, uh, pu- you know, publicly and performing at uh, different uh, steakhouses and lounges and things like that, I did a variety of music. I did uh, 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 Neil Diamond, uh, Engelbert, uh, Bobby Darren. Wow. Uh, a variety of songs, and and I actually enjoyed. I, I like the Neil Diamond songs. I mean, I I have a, a, a real knack for that. My mother uh, always enjoyed Neil Diamond. That was one of her favorite uh, entertainers and performers. And so I kind of took a liking to his music. And uh, I've done a variety of uh, the older standard type, uh, you know, uh, performers' music. So yeah, I, I like the variety of stuff. But mostly now I stay with what I know as far as like. Uh, the big band Sinatra stuff because it is it's always it's, it's timeless and everybody can connect to it so yeah well it's just the greatest gift from God to be able mm-hmm. to possess the voice that you have and to be able to connect with people yeah. and uh, to be able to take them outside of their norm mm-hmm. <laughs> true. into another place and it's very romantic it's very sweet uh, the, the the message is just wonderful it embraces you now that is a gift from God how or when did you ever have the opportunity to engage with God? How early was it in your life? What, at the moment that you were able to interact with God, at what point in your life is what I'm trying to ask? Well, I, I first uh, dedicated my life to the Lord, became a, a Christian, uh, you know, a, a, a dedicated Christian when I was 11 years old at uh, uh, Leighton Ford Crusade. Now, Leighton Ford was Billy Graham's uh, brother-in-law. He would actually travel like Billy Graham did back in the day, and he would do crusades. And they came to our city, and my mom took me and my brothers, 
and we were in the audience and we came forward to make a profession of faith in Christ. And um, it was a, I'll never forget, it was a transforming experience for me at that time in my life. And as we got older, you know, you kind of go up and down with that whole thing because, you know, as life goes on, you're in high school, you're hanging out with kids that maybe aren't Christians or have, you know, that kind of guidance in their life or faith in their life. And so, um, you know, I went back and forth for a while, but when I, be, when I got to turn up, just after high school, 19 years old, I'll, I'll never forget, I ran into a bunch of friends from high school that also dedicated their lives to Christ. And I went from, you know, hitting the bars every now and then to, <laughs> you know, right back to my uh, Christian roots and, and going to Bible studies and having Bible studies with the friends that I, that I knew from high school that were doing it. And we had a nice little group of guys and girls that um, were just uh, getting together for social things that were outside of the, you know, typical uh, bar scene. Uh, although I'm, kind of, I, I always have to be in that scene now because it's a part of what I do. I've become a little more balanced, I think, on the whole thing, but able to be in a place where I can at least uh, touch lives where I probably normally wouldn't have if I didn't. What about the praise and worship music? Um, I did a lot of that when I was uh, going to a church up in um, uh, Penfield, New York, uh, Browncroft Community Church. I, won't, I couldn't forget that because that's where I performed live with the drama group, and we sang a lot of gospel songs. And as far as my own, uh, uh, you know, persuasion in that area, I have not done any gospel music. Uh, I'm not opposed to doing it. It's uh, there's a whole uh, uh, variety of things I'd like to do moving forward. Uh, including some jazz and, and writing my own songs. And, and uh, most certainly, uh, gospel music would definitely be a part of that. Now, what are the most difficult situations that you've endured and been able to surpass? Well, I'd say divorce in my life. I have two beautiful young children. Uh, well, they're not young anymore, but I always think they're young, and they always remind me of how they're not because <laughs> they're doing things. And I said, listen, I'm your dad. I'll be your dad till you're, you know, whenever. I don't know how old I'll be and you'll be when it's uh, when we, when I move on. But the thing is, I'm a father and I love my babies. And I got, like I say, two beautiful girls, uh, 23 and 25. And um, I'm blessed like that. Uh, but again, yeah, divorce was tough. You know, I'm, I'm a very, uh, you know, relationship. I'm a a, a relationship guy. I, we were married 17 years, uh, just differences in views and things like that separated us, unfortunately. And, and believe it or not, both Christians. Um, it was unfortunate. So that was a downturn in my life, I think, and something that I wish I could, uh, I wish I could have done differently. But you, you go on and, you know, and you move on and you just, you, you pick up things and you move on and you, and you move forward. I mean, that's the only thing you can do. Now that you're moving forward, mm -hmm. Tell me about the wonderful side of music, um, any history or, or story that you'd like to share with the audience. Well, for me, it's just been the, uh, the journey that I've had in uh, starting out in basically my basement singing to myself <laughs> and my little and my little daughter amanda and who's now a songwriter and singer and is putting things wow, out on her own wonderful. yeah i would love for you to meet her and, oh, and, and for sure. she's uh she's quite an inspiration to me i know i was probably to her and um you know it's uh it the journey's been exciting um probably a little later in life than I would have hoped it to be. But nonetheless, uh, I mean, I don't try to put any, uh, you know, uh, parameters on that kind of thing. But uh, I, I've enjoyed the journey. I mean, it just keeps getting better. It's not like it's slowed down or anything other than the COVID. You know, yes. this whole pandemic thing has stopped a lot of entertainment, but it's offered me other opportunities to be able to connect with people and friends and to uh, do things that I probably wouldn't have done had I constantly been going. So we've got, you know, I'm working with Khalil Ali, as you know, Muhammad Ali's wife, and she's my manager. She's not only my manager, she's a mentor and a great friend. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just so thankful that in life you have certain connections and there's only so many connections you make in a lifetime. And, and I couldn't be more uh, flattered, honored, and privileged to have someone of her stature and her makeup and her personality to be a part of my life. Because quite honestly, 
uh, like I say, the journey's gotten better, and just meeting her has been just something that's uh, really put the frosting on the cake for my journey. I mean, if it ended today, I'd be as happy as I could ever be. Wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we do have a surprise for the audience. Yes. She'll be joining us later in the program. Yes. So I'm really excited about that as well. Uh-huh. The very thought of you. It's just yeah. a beautiful song. Yes, it is. Tell me how this song came to your life. Well, the song was introduced to me uh, through a friend of mine who was actually a DJ, and he was doing a wedding for a couple that wanted that for their uh, their uh, bridal dance. And he had called me and he had said, hey, Frank, would you be able to do this? I was out of town at the time, but I was coming back in town. And I said, yeah, let me do it. And ever since I did that song for that couple, um, and it was heard, and then he, I, I know he posted it at a few different uh, social media sites, and it became a song that not only people enjoyed that I did, but one that I actually enjoyed that I did, because the way that the song is written, and the way that the song, and the lyrics, and the and the music in the song is performed, it just has a real good melody and harmony, and it's real smooth, and it just really says a lot about. Uh, the women in your life and the woman in your life. Let's put it that way. It's just a great tune. And I, I got to say, it's just one that's very inspiring and it just touches your heart. I love it. It's a beautiful song. Yeah. All your songs are beautiful. Thank you. Is there a particular song that you've come very close to? Um, and have you sang any of the Frank Sinatra songs? I do sing most of his songs. And... Um, I mean, as far as all the songs that uh, that Frank Frank sang, I think over four hundred songs, which is a lot of songs to to perform and uh, to have to remember the lyrics to and everything. But when you do them over time, you do it's like second nature. As far as specifics, I enjoy them all. Uh, there are ones that I do like. Uh, you make me feel so young. I mean, that song is so inspiring to me because it speaks to so many generations. And I know when I've performed for uh, several nursing homes and I see and I sing that particular song, you could just see the faces of the people there, you know, light up. And I'll sometimes even grab the mic and go off the stage wow, and go down into the beautiful. audience and sing with a couple of them. And, and they know the words and they feel the song. And, you know, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a spiritual uh, song, per se. None of them really are. I mean, there might be some connotations to some of them. But the spiritual impact that it makes on the people that I sing for, especially the, uh, in the nursing homes and things like that, and even the younger people, it, you could just see how it impacts them. Um, I've had people from 20-something to 80-something enjoy wow. the songs that I sing and Sinatra songs that I see. I look at some of these younger people and say, how do you even know this stuff? And they go, oh, we love Frank Sinatra. I go, how? My grandfather, my father listened to it. And it's music different than what we have today because it's really cool and sounds great. And it's just touching. And it's, I mean, I'm hearing these, these are younger guys saying this to me and younger people. So it's its timeless and it's, uh, it's legendary stuff. You know? And it's so wonderful because I can imagine that it brings them back. Yeah. Uh, to to their story of course, yeah. uh, when they were younger and their life. Mm-hmm. Well, it's just a reflection. Yeah, absolutely. So that is wonderful. Very inspiring. No, most definitely. Now, I want to ask you, um, for instance, there's a lot of things that are coming up. What are you most excited about? <laughs> well, we've been kind of on the downturn here as far as like uh, what's uh, happening with the COVID and everything. A lot of the venues haven't really opened up to large uh, large audiences yet. But um, I am excited to work with Khalil Ali, obviously, because uh, she's been connecting me with uh, different venues. Venues that, um, well, for example, in Las Vegas, I haven't performed there since 2004, and I would love to be back in Las Vegas, um, and she's got the connections for that. And also, we've been talking to uh, Boca Resort and the Hard Rock uh, Hotel and Casino. So I'm excited about those shows because I know once those shows are uh, back in action, so to speak, that uh, those opportunities will just uh, blossom into other opportunities. So I'm looking forward to things getting back to normal, and I'm sure they will be. It'll just take time, and we'll have to do it safely, of course. Most definitely. I'm excited for you. Thank you. I'm also excited to bring her. Uh, I think it's a good moment to invite her into the program.
I'm Buenos so... días. Oh, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Sí. ¿Dónde está la grabadora? La grabadora está debajo de la mesa. Oh, wow. She's... Está aquí. She's going deep. Yeah, baby. Right, en mama. el micrófono. ¿Ya oís? El micrófono. El micrófono. Oh, yes. Look at that. Mamá Lee, vamos a hablar en español. Frank Barbado in Spanish now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know, you got to be able to speak all languages when you go yes. places. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. it's so wonderful to have you here. So exciting. I'm excited. I had no idea I was coming on the show. I, this is all about Frank Barbado. Yes, it is. You know, but this is <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Well, you couldn't have a better person on, on the radio. Yes, and I'm excited. I'm so blessed that he's blessed us today with inviting you to come to the studio and join us uh, in the program here. It's just a, it's all been a surprise. It is. Mm. Yeah, he uh, told me about the uh, interview, and I said, this is really great. Oh, that's mm -hmm. wonderful. But Frank is, uh, he's a legend. He, yes. he has come from legendary people. Nancy Barbado Sinatra was a great woman. She helped and build Frank Sinatra and supported him in his younger years. That's why he's great. And, um, you know, I felt in the same footsteps too, building and supporting great, great man, men. And um, she was really wonderful. I, I, I've always been an admirer of hers. And they're lock in with this dude here, man. Yes. I, I mean, you know, you, it's good managing people who are just totally talented. Yes, they yes. just can't help it. You know. Yes. So it's easy to market people like him because he is a legendary le royalty of music. And even though he taught, he's a self-taught person. Yes. But uh, we're gonna see what we can do to put him on a grandstand. Sinatra is gone. Nancy is gone. And he has to uh, carry on the legend as a great singer. Yes, most definitely. It's been a lot of fun, too. We've met so many. But we have a lot of mutual friends. Wow. How exciting is that? It's, 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 to meet it's, it's, legendary people yeah. uh, that have brought so much joy to so many people around the world. And to be able to have those connections and interact with those wonderful people as well. But you, you know what, you know what it does. It shows the spirituality of God connecting the dots, putting the right people together for the right reasons. And people must. This is why people. He's a very spiritual person, and uh, I admire that. I'm a spiritual person, and we're from two different ways of life. Two, yes. two different religions, but they're all together. They all meet each other and atone to the spirituality of life. And, it's, and that's why people need to learn to respect people's religion because it's a beautiful thing. Yes. No religion teaches you to hate. No religion teaches you, uh, you know, bad things to be bad. I mm -hmm. mean... If you're going to be a Christian, be a good one. If you're yes. going to be a Muslim, be a good one. If you're going to be Jewish, be a good one. Because it, it's all about what God wants you to do. It's all about love. Love. There you Lo go. Loving each other, understanding yes. each other. And it's good to talk about the things of God. What does the Bible say? That's right. Um, how do you perceive it? How yeah. do I perceive it? Yeah. What does the Word say? I mean, Amen. it's wonderful. It, it just nurtures you. It does. And yeah. you, they need to know this. They need to know when Jesus speaks, listen, because there's nothing wrong in any of it. It's all wisdom for you to learn and carry your life by. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful thing. And people don't realize how beautiful the religions are. Christianity, Islam, Judaism, it's all a beautiful thing. You know? Especially the Proverbs. A lot of people yes. say, well, how can I be a good Christian? How can I perceive? Well, read Proverbs. Yeah. Proverbs teaches you right. a lot of those wisdom. great values and right. wisdom exactly. for you to be a good person, a good That's Christian. Right. And, it's a, and it's a beautiful thing. I, I've seen a lot of, uh, but see, they don't look at Christianity in the right way. When you see and look, and, and there are signs all over. 
they have movies about the Vikings and Christians and, and the medieval times. And, and Christianity is what brought what your humanity to the barbarians and the people that didn't believe in God. They believed idols, you know. So when Christianity came, they just, ugh. They didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to just to try to destroy it. But see, since they couldn't do that, they had to just go along with it. So, you know, the kings back in those times, the Romans, you know, yeah. it was like, you know. You're God is in the throne, God. Mama Lee. <laughs> God is in the throne. I know it is. <laughs> I totally agree. And... And it's really beautiful, and that that's why I was saying it, when it comes down to it, this guy is really beautiful. He's a yes, he spiritual is. person. He's a talented person. Hell, I wish I could sing He's like a that. very <laughs> loving person. He's yeah. so simple. Mm-hmm. He has this wonderful voice. I know. It's God's beautiful. gift. God's gift. That's and right. And he's just Thank so you. simple. Yeah. <laughs> and he is simple. He's a nice, he's a good man. They easy don't have to men. figure out, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you, you're easy to figure out because you do what men do. Back in the day, see, you're old soul. Old school, yeah. You got, yeah, oh, you're yeah. old school. Yes, you know, ma'am. women today couldn't handle you. Yeah, a lot of them can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. Oh, so funny. Yeah, that's why we both are single because it's really hard. Yeah, <laughs> you old guys school. are too much. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have a good time. We together. have a good time together. Oh, that's you know? great. He's, he's a good person. Oh, I, I do want you to share a little bit of history mm-hmm. with, with your husband, Muhammad Ali. Oh, wow. Is there anything that you would like to share with the audience? Oh, you know what? My life is an open book. <laughs> You know, matter of fact, we're going to yeah, right here. <laughs> but you know, it's it it was nice. I was only ten years old when I actually literally met the guy, and he was eighteen years old. At that time, it was nineteen sixty. He had just won the Olympics in Rome, representing the United States in the boxing world. So he got the gold medal, and and he comes back. And I don't know anything about what's going on in in Rome. You know, it's, I was only 10, you know. <laughs> yes. So I, this guy comes to the school to want to see the Muslim empire. And he said, I'm going to be the heavyweight champion of the world before I'm 21. Get your autographs now because I'm going to be famous. I said, what is this guy coming <laughs> in telling me what he going to do? And then, you know, Muslims have different names, you know, beautiful historical names, you know. And, and and Christians got beautiful historical names, you know, like Ruth, you know, like John, you know. You got beautiful names in this religious, right? And he comes up and he said, here, girl, this is my autograph. I looked at it and I said, wait a minute. Your name is Cassius <laughs> Marcellus? That's a Roman name. You you know what the Romans did to people, brother? You know, <laughs> I know, I don't know. And I said, then you got clay. That's like dirt you mold. And, you proud of this, my man? He said, I thought it was. <laughs> I said, man, until you had, and I start tearing it up. And I said, until you get a name of respect, a name of honor. Matter of fact, if you get a Muslim, you know, I can understand it. And then I could accept that. But I sort of just gave it back to him. So you take that back, which I don't think I want that name. He just went off. <laughs> oh, my God. He said, she tore my autograph. Pretty men don't get rejected. Right. Pretty men with a name don't get rejected. Except that time, at that day, that was an awakening for him. And that's when the target landed on my forehead. So he goes, who is she, man? Who is she? I, you, you can't mess with her. She, She's Muslim. She's a damn Muslim version. They don't even talk to me. He said, well, she talked to me and she tore my autograph. He said, well, maybe she's trying to tell you something, but you want to leave that alone. That's how it started. Wow. That's how it started. And the book that I'm writing is the untold story. Frank want to call it the greatest behind the greatest. Because she is. She's, uh, the, she's the matriarch of the family. Uh, I think the thing, too, that people don't understand, Elaine, like I was telling you earlier, is um, like Kalila and Nancy uh, Sinatra Sr. Uh, and my own mom, as a matter of fact, who worked in a factory, was supposed to work in a factory a couple of years to bring extra money into the home when my mom and dad were married. Ended up 30 years in a GM factory in a plant that was just 
full of smells and grease and lugging tools and things around it, things that men would be doing. And she did it for 30 years and provided a, a let kept us in our home and uh, allowed us to be able to go to a decent school and yeah. have food on the table. So what I focus on in, 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 in performing and another thing you said, what do you, what, what excites you about your journey and the things that you do to perform? And this is the, the key thing is I get to tell the story of the women behind the men that don't get the accolades that created the men that they were. So mm-hmm. Nancy, of course, Sinatra Sr., behind Frank, and, and, and of course, Muhammad Ali, and, and Mama Ali being that, uh, that impetus to, to behind him in, in creating the brand that he became, protecting the brand that he was because he was always, you know, out doing his own deal and, and making things real hard. She was like out trying to like, you know, like the, the what is that thing? Juggle. The, the juggler <laughs> who's trying the to, juggle. you know, catch everything. Or you see it in these <laughs> sitcoms and, and, yeah. and cartoons where they're, you know, their things are falling and they're trying to catch it all over the place. And that's Mama Ali. She was always trying to clean up uh, after, the, after what, the, the things that, that he did yeah. in order to keep the brand and to keep him protected right. for for his uh, for his own good and for the future of uh, of his brand, and so the same thing with uh, a lot of the women that I think don't get the accolades uh, as far as and and we all know it's it's the the women in life not only are, is it because of women we're here, I mean it's my mom it's her yeah. uh, they create life. God-given life, of yeah. course, and um, and then they sustain it. So there's a lot more to it than I think people even think about sometimes with uh, uh, how the matriarchs of these great and famous uh, celebrity families uh, are, are not seen and, and what and the work that goes behind. It's, it's really do. tough because when I met Frank Sinatra, I was like, oh, my God, I'm, this is the greatest guy in the world. And, and I see all kind of women's coming toward him. It's, it's, and I think men is just too weak to handle it. They can't handle it, you know. And there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a saying in the Holy Quran that says men were made to be weak. And it's really there. And I'm going, yeah, that, yeah, that <laughs> is. Yeah. So That's we understand true. that the women are basically like you. You're a queen. You're a mother. You know, you have yeah. children, right? Yes, I have to. Now you have to let, see you. You have you're a nurturer. You nurture yeah. these children. The yes. men don't nurture them. They they there to to be a guide. But if they're not there, they still gonna be guided with the, without them. But, yes. but uh, it shows that you and you know what? A lot of people out there. I want. I'm I'm talking to the Christian women out there right now. You know, I'm telling you that. If you have not had any children, you are naturally a mother anyway. So yeah. don't feel bad if you don't have kids or can have kids. You are born mother because you're always teaching somebody else. Yes. You're always nurturing somebody. Sure. Else. How yep. many women out there have nurtured kids and they're not theirs? No, but women true. are still mothers, mothers of civilization. That's that's what they are, and they were born that way, whether they like it or not. And and women like you, doing this beautiful OVM radio, you're 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 spreading love, you're spreading the spirit of of your Christianity home base, giving information, giving love. Yes. And you're sitting out behind the how many back in the 1920s a woman would be behind a mic. Speaking out, we have come a long yes. way. Amen. Yes, we have. We have come a long way. And I give ode to great women like Nancy Barbado Sinatra because uh, I really looked up to her a lot. And I saw what I had to go through, and boy, that was deep. <laughs> <laughs> but it hits you. Yeah. It, 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 all women are like that. You know, the wives of these great men, they, they suffer a little bit because— you know, they have to be confronted with nonsense all the time. That's just the way it is. It's tough. It's tough. It's it easy to converse about it, but yes. to live it through, yes. it, yeah. it, it's just not and that And you easy. never know how <laughs> successful you are until it's over. You yes. know what I'm saying? You're going, why is this happening Especially to me? Especially when you're in the spotlight. Right. Yeah. People are looking at you. Uh, you yeah. become yeah. Uh, someone of an example. Yeah. Um, you become many things to many people. Yeah. Like a regular, ordinary woman with a husband going around with other women. Now, somebody's going to find out. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, God's going to give the the wife some kind of incentive. She's going to have some kind of mother wit and going to pick up on it. It's not going to pass her by. And and then uh, the little neighborhood might hear about it. But if it's me, the whole world hears about it, and it's worse. Yes, it's worse. It's worse. And you just have to learn to be strong. Women has to always be the strong ones, but it's necessary. Yes. And um, it, it's just a beautiful thing to have the balance. Uh, it's good man have woman because that's, that's, that's his balance. And to look at God. Yeah. God is our sustainer. Yes. Uh, when, mm-hmm. when you have so many eyes and so many people and saying so many things that you don't even know what is it about? <laughs> exactly. You get confused. You get confused. Distracted. But thank God. God is in the center of our lives, Frank. And, yes, amen. And you're amen. able to true. stay focused and true. Yes, true. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise. It is It is a daily uh, uh, battle. But the know. blessing is that we have this the book of history that keeps us on track. So block out a lot of stuff. You got your Bible. Mm-hmm. It is your guide. God, your God, your guide, the Holy Quran is is a Muslim guide, and the Torah is the Jewish people guide. And if you follow those guides, you're not going to have a problem. You're just going to have to learn how to cope with those problems, and that shows you how to do that. Yeah, and give some of that to God. Yes, you got to <laughs> give everything to yeah, God. Exactly, <laughs> everything. Because he'll firm. help us. He controls everything. No matter yeah. how bad the country is going. God has a plan for the whole thing. Amen. We we just don't know it. He knows it. And and we just have to learn to accept what's happening and yes. pray and keep and praying him. for him yeah. to yes. take care of everything. Because he's going to take care of it anyway. We need to enjoy everything that God is giving us. That's right. right. The talents, the gifts, the everything gifts. we receive, but we give back. Absolutely. We give God, we give back to people, to societies, to communities, to countries. We just give it back. Give it back. It's so wonderful. Um, and the more I learn about the Bible, the Bible is very descriptive as to uh, the times. Yep. So yeah. we need to rest in God. That's right. Because he is the one that is in the throne, and he is the one that has everything laid out. It's just for us to learn it. Yeah, we're just going through the time, yeah. Exactly. That's amazing. It's It's one thing about a book, a Bible, or a Quran, or a Torah. When you read it, you have to read it over and over and over. You never get all the essence out of it. It's always going to be there for you to to reference. But if you read a regular book... You read it, you know the story, you're done. You go get another book. But the Bible, you can't do that. You can't even go back to the same verses. Yeah, I know it. And it, it just and you speaks to you. And you get something new every single so today, time. Today, I, yeah. I only wish today uh, that some of the younger generation, and some of them do. I mean, I know my kids read the Bible and they look at it. It's the owner's manual of life. I mean, it really is. But a lot of kids, I think, today not only has faith not been a part of their growing up, and church has not been a part of their growing up because it's looked at something like, I guess, for older people because, you know, someday when you die, you want to go to heaven and all of that. And that's a part of all this. But the point is the, the Bible is a manual for life, not for death. And I think that's what gets missed a lot of times is that we, we, relig- we, we create a religious type of uh, connotation around God and talking about God and but it's 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 a manual for life uh, creating life comes from the word and what I always try to focus on is not the natural but the supernatural because if you think about the supernatural the supernatural is what you want to focus on because it creates reality in your life of supernatural things mm-hmm. so you want to focus on those positive super, supernatural experiences that you can read out of the Bible and take those experiences and then uh, Focus on them and have that reality in your own life. Because there are so many things that you can do. Look at this. Do you think that in my lifetime <laughs> that I thought that I would be what connecting? Me? Yeah, me too. I and, met you. Well, you got to let me get there. You better let me get there. <laughs> I'm working my way around the room here. And Elaine, I mean, to, to think that I would be able to be in a room with two very popular women and to be able to be able to talk on a radio program and be able to share our experiences yeah. of our lives together, I would, you know, 
20, 30 years ago, if you said that to me, I probably wouldn't even believe it was possible. But because of the supernatural connections God makes, you know, we are all in this room together and we are here being able to talk and share our different stories of what we've been through and the celebrity (laughs) status of what we have in our lives. And, you know, that's good. And it's it's had its down times, but it's had its great experiences, too. And like Mama Ali always says when she's asked about her life is, you know, and do you have any regrets in your life, and she says, I, I, I have no regrets because she's even in the bad times. I've re- I learned a lot from the bad times. Well, you no, I know you do, but you don't regret it because you enjoy Enjoyed every what, moment. What she you, started early at 10. Yeah, 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 yeah. You started early, all right. Well, I was taking photography when I was eight. Okay, oh, wow. I made my first black belt when I was eight. I, and you're such a beautiful woman. I'm just a reflection of you. Get at it. <laughs> Frank, help me out here. Yeah, right. Well, hey, I, I, I can't go anywhere. Room, there. I, I can't yeah, there's mirrors all over this yeah, room. So. You, so you're like 45, right? 40. Well, thank you so much. Really? Uh, don't 40, you, 48. I, 48. No, I don't do that age thing. Don't do that age thing. Mama Ali, we're in the air. Yeah, we're on the air. Oh, we're <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm going to let, every, let everybody know I'm 70 years old. Well, you, did you? Because you look, no you look like you're 50, so you can you say do. that and be proud of it. My daughter is 52. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, it's true. No way. Yeah. My mom is ninety. She looks sixty. She does. Oh my god. She, she scares me. Drives around. Yeah. I got bad. I got a bad knee, right? I got a little arthritis. So when I go to a supermarket, oh, to Publix, is so funny. this is funny, isn't it? <laughs> she, you know, the little electric chairs you go and you yeah. drive. My mama cracks up when she sees me in them, and she goes, "Because her mother's ninety, walking through the store." My mother's not walking through the store like a gazelle. Oh I go, "Mom, don't laugh at me. I did this so funny." <laughs> She's ninety walking she's through the street. She's ninety. Oh she's like God. a gazelle going over here. I said, "Mama, God, wait for me!" And I'm she, God. Mama Ali, oh, we'll be in. So we'll, cute. we'll be in the store, and she'll be in one of them carts. And so I'll go. All right, Mama, I'm going to let you go over here. You go to this side of the store. I'm going to go look for some stuff. Now, now, if you need anything, call me on the phone. She don't call me on the phone. I'll hear her on the other side of the store. <laughs> So I got to come all the way over to the other end of the store and I start pushing that cart while she keeps uh, the thing in drive. And, oh and we got to go get back and get another one. Yeah. It's hysterical. We have the best time yeah. together. Oh I'm my God. You. And we're having the best time now. I'm really yes, enjoying it so much. Uh, and I want to say hi to everyone who has joined us uh, in this wonderful program this afternoon. I really want to thank uh, uh, our Salmist evangelist, Vicky Romero. She oh. made this possible. Thank and I want to honor God her. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I want you to talk to her before you leave you on the got phone. You got it. I would love to talk if, to another queen. If I don't do this, I'm in trouble. <laughs> oh, Vicky, and yes. Frank, so I'm are a, you. <laughs> I know I am. Hey, you I know what? But you know what? Yes. This, this is about life. It's so beautiful. And I met so many beautiful. And, and I, I just met a guy named John Sachs. He is awesome. Yes. He is he's awesome. Amazing. He's, he's yes. Right I'm going to recruit him at my casting company. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like to be in Kalila Ali or Mama Ali's casting company, just send your pictures and resume. And if you don't have a resume, don't worry about it. We'll make one. Go to the greatest casting right. agency at AOL.com and submit your photograph. Amen. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Frank and uh, Mama Ali, yes. what are the projects that are coming up uh, immediately this year, and what are your expectations for the new year? Well, what I can say is, knowing Frank, I I really, but this is a, in a, we're in a pandemic now with the COVID-19. We have to respect the sources, and it's very hard to book anything soon. But um, my target is uh, a nice concert for Mr. Uh, Frank Bar- Barbado at the Hard Rock Cafe. We're trying to get him in the Hard Rock. It's a beautiful hotel, and I think this will be a good venture. Mm-hmm. It's very possible that it will become that will be the first big concert coming soon uh, after the pandemic. There's a lot of things open up now, so that will be. I'm working on my life story book, which it should oh. be done in. Uh, at the end of October, so we'll open it up. I want to open it up in the new year, uh, 2021, and after that, I'll be casting some of my films, and all our films are going to be so clean, 
your child could come to the movies because we're not going to have no sex in it. We're not going to have all this bad language in it. And, um, Amen. Yeah, we're going to cut that out. Yeah. And and you know what? A lot of people done. say, you know, everybody says that it doesn't matter. It's wrong. Mm-hmm. And we're, I mean, even the ratings on television, you know how it says yeah. uh, adult language? How is adult supposed to be talking like that? That's not adult language. That's P for profanity. Yes. Don't even call yeah, it adult I, I, language. I, I hear things that I can't believe they say. Oh, it's true to life. Well, I don't hear people talking that much. Yeah. True to uh, life, it needs to be stopped. At least stopped. not the people it I'm around. Stop. Me. You know, they might do that once in a while, but not like these movies are getting so inundated with that kind of thing. And I think that's a, a big problem in that industry. And, 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 and thank God, uh, Mama Ali, for... Uh, you know, people like yourself that are going to be making productions that don't have to contain all that. And I can watch a movie without any of it yeah. in it. And we still need get... to train yeah, our children. Yeah, enjoy the story. We need to train our exactly. children that when you use your intelligence, bad language is not even necessary. Amen. It show people that you have yes. intelligence. Very good. And you have faith. I love it. You know. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thank you so much. So that means you're coming back, right? Uh, yes, I'm going to be a fly on the wall. I'll be here every time <laughs> you want me. When the book comes out, I'll be here. Okay. God willing, I will be here. God okay. willing that this young man right here, we get. Uh, he does such great works and do weddings. If they want to contact yes. Mr. Barbado for a wedding or anything like that, have him, have him to call 305-910-3136. That's 305-910-3136. And, and if it comes through this OVM, if you want to call OVM Radio and ask Elaine yes. for, for or the contact number, she'll give it to you. Mm-hmm. I will. Yeah. I surely will. And then you'll get a discount, a 10% discount when you call OVM Radio. All right. To make Wonderful. a booking. Yes. yes. And also, I want to share your CD. Um, Frank Barbado Live. I'm going to show it here at the, at the camera so they have a good view. And I urge you to get this CD. The music is just amazing. Um, just the thought of you will play right after the program is over for you to enjoy. Thank you so much. And Frank, um, we've come to the end of the program. All I right. would be here all day with you guys. Oh, we could have a blast. I think my producer would. <laughs> if, I, <laughs> if I wants to lunch. Yeah, yeah. we're, we're going to do that. Yeah. But um, t- what would you like to say now that we've come to the end of the program? I want to say thank you for having me. And, of course, uh, this great lady next to me, yes. Mama Ali, Dr. Kalila Ali. Uh, it's been an inspiration for my life, really, to uh, to not only connect with you and meet you, Elaine, but also this great lady. And so many great uh, women I've had an opportunity to connect with in my lifetime. And, you know, I just, like I say, I credit my mom for the fact that I do uh, focus on the, on, on the storyline of the women behind the men who have made it great and famous. Uh, like I say, Mama, I'll be oh. greatest behind mm-hmm. the greatest. So. Oh. Well, you know, I want to say just one thing. Um, my whole mission in life is to better the characters of our people. Uh, so what I did, I, I loved the color as a kid. So I created a coloring book that teaches manners and etiquette. To adults as well as children. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So you can call in OVM Radio <laughs> and you can get your coloring book. There you go. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I like, I like to deal with people's characters, you know. And those, those books, just incidentally, which yeah. you didn't mention, is those books go for free. We give them out. Mom Ali gives them out to uh, different uh, shelters and things that can't afford to have them for the kids. And those are all uh, given out for free. So the, the, anything that comes in is obviously helps to print them and all of that. So it's a more of a charitable thing. It's a charitable thing. Yeah. Well, if we can help in that sense, please, yeah. you can provide us some and mm-hmm. we'll definitely give them out for That's sure awesome. to Thank spread you. that uh, joy. God, Amen. Well, God bless you. God Amen. For this time, I really you. had a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Awesome. And I'm so blessed to have met you, Mama Ali. Frank Barbado, I've already met him. He's wonderful. Thank I you, thank Elena. God for your lives. <laughs> thank you for keeping inspiring uh, yes. the lives around the mm. world. Thank you so yes. much. It's just Amen. wonderful and to you're... continue the legacy mm-hmm. and keep it alive. Thank you. That's right. So all those people out there listening to this OVM, the radio program that you're listening to, 
You're all a beautiful. You're all God's children, and you were made to be great. So Amen. stick with that. Coming from the greatest. There you go. The <laughs> Man. And there I'm you leaving go. with those wonderful okay. words. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless you. God, God bless, bless you. I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.